I've got a picture post magazine here. It's from the 18th of March, 1950. And today, as I'm making this video, is the 18th of March, 2024. So it's 74 years old today. We've got England's lacrosse girls on the front there. Uh, it said, why should we idolize Rommel? My main interest in these old magazines is the adverts, the prices, and the coins that he'd used to buy these things. So that would be four pence. So you'd probably pay like that if you go to the news agents and buy it, just four pennies. Okay, let's have a look inside. What have we got here? Ben's Drop Royal Dutch Chocolates. No prices there though. Okay, what we've got here is Harvest Burgundy from Empire Vineyards, Burgoynes. What's that wine? 11 and 6 in the mealtime flagon and 5 and 9 per half flagon. Now 11 and 6 if you were using coins, you could have paid with two shillings. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 shillings and sixpence. A lot of the old 50% silver and 92.5% silver coins were still in circulation then. But more than likely, you wouldn't have paid anything that expensive in just coins. You'd have probably used a 10 shilling note like that. 10 shillings and then just gone 11 and sixpence. A shirt blouse with spare collar, double two, 22 and fourpence. That's one pound, two shillings and fourpence. There's Willie Lott's Cottage, as seen in the Hay Wayne by John Constable. It still looks exactly like that now. I went there a couple of years ago. That's in Suffolk, and that's advertising Bass Worthington Brewery. Right, next page. Can I smoke less tobacco and still enjoy 20 a day? 20 good cigarettes? <laughs> yes, mine's a minor. 20 for two and seven. So, two shillings and seven pence. So, there's your two shillings. There's a threepenny bit, threepence, two shillings and threepence. And then you've got four, five, six and seven pence. Do they still exist? Is that cheap? Would that have been cheap back then? I don't know anything about cigarettes, never smoked in my life. Of course, the coins you got in your change in 1950 would still be in pretty good condition. Macintosh's Quality Street there. And a great big page of uh, shampoo advert. One and three. One shilling and threepence for that. Okay, let's carry on. Opportunity knocks. What's this? Paulix advert. What's going on here then? Amateur Talent Contest. Gosh, we must have a bash at this, Ted. It may be the big chance we've been working for. Let's rehearse tonight, shall we? Oh, good idea, Pete. But he's thinking, or is it? I don't feel much like it, but I must try and buck up. Yeah, buck up, Ted. Uh, a bit later. Can't we knock off now, Pete? I've had enough, says Ted. Okay, mate, but the show's on Saturday. He looks really tired, doesn't he? I wonder what the solution is in this Horlex advert. Let's go on and find out. The talent show has arrived. I thought you said these two were good. Well, they usually are. It's that Ted Haynes. He don't seem to have any life at all. He's got a lovely top hat, though. What a flop. Bottom of the pole. And it's my fault. You were fine, Pete. I let you down. Just forget it, Ted. Just an off day, mate. Oh, he's so nice, isn't he, Pete? I like him. Oh, poor old Ted. What's he say now? All my days are off days lately, Pete. I get so tired. Even wake up tired after a long night's sleep. Ah, what's his advice? Why don't you see the doc, Ted? I bet it's the dull food we get. Yeah, of course, there was still food rationing going on in 1950. Anyway, he's at the doctor's. And the doctor's saying, oh no, the food's not to blame. Sleep controls energy as well as food. If you wake tired, even after quite a long night, you're not getting the right kind of sleep. Deep sleep. A cup of Horlicks, yeah, I thought it would. A cup of Horlicks every night, that's my advice. So what did he do? He took Horlicks every night. I'd just like to say now, this channel is not sponsored by Horlicks. Yet. Sometime later, Ted says, Pete, guess what? Roy Johns, the West End producer, is going to be at the Works concert. He's a pal of my old man's. Let's get cracking on the act. Oh, he's perked up a bit, isn't he? Are you actually watching this? This is supposed to be a coin channel. And you're watching me narrate a 74-year-old Horlicks advert. I just lose my way sometimes. Anyway, let's carry on. 
We're at the Works concert now, and this guy's saying, these two are good, especially the one in the top hat. That's Ted Haynes. The other's name is Willett. I wonder if they're still touring. I think I need to get tickets to see these. After the show. So, how about it? A professional contract? Whoopee! And old Ted's thinking, good old Horlicks, what a pal. Well, you can read Ted's summing up there if you like, uh, but it sold it to me. Alexa, add Horlicks to my shopping list. Horlicks added to your shopping list. There you go, that advert got a sale 74 years after it was published. It doesn't say how much it is though, and I can't see any prices on this side either, so let's carry on. Martel, now I know that's Brandy. Uh, Reg rides a rally. Reg Harris, world professional cycling sprint champion. Has anybody heard of Reg Harris? No prices again there though. Oh, look at that. Bendix does it automatically. Let's have a closer look at that. Better buy a Bendix. It does wash automatically. Let's see what it does. It fills itself. It washes nine pounds of clothes. It rinses three times. Spins damp dry. Cleans and drains itself and switches off. But there's no price there. Duraglit for a brilliant polish. Brilliant for polishing your coins. No, don't do it. So we've got metal polish, nine pence, and one and three per tin. Silver and chromium polish, one and two per tin. So one and two, one shilling and tuppence would be equal to about six P these days. Now there's a big advert for a fridge, Frigidaire. Not many people had a fridge in 1950. Have we got a price there? This new Frigidaire holds your weak supply of perishable foods. So it says model R four and a half. That's a great model name. 77 pounds plus 18 pounds, 17 shillings purchase tax. So that's, a, that's nearly 96 pounds. You could get a fridge for about that nowadays. So anyone in the comments, please, what would that equate to in today's money? Taking into account 74 years of inflation. Gosh, got to be around about a thousand pounds, surely, just for a fridge. No wonder not many people had one. Okay, let's see what exciting stuff's on the next page. What have we got here then? More cigarette adverts there. Capstan. Uh, okay, what's this? This is crisp. Shivers jam. I think in the USA you call that jelly, don't you? Ribble, wobble, ribble, wobble, jelly on a plate. That's jelly. Right, okay, let's have a look at this uh, Mrs. Crisp in the Weetabix cereal. Oh, I'll get it. Yeah, play on words. Here we go. So, what's happening? Okay, Donald is saying, Can I have something different for tea? And Mother says, Oh dear, Donald, you are difficult. So, Mother gets on the phone to Mrs. Crisp. Hello. Oh, Mrs. Crisp, Donald's so fussy now he's convalescent. Oh, he must have been ill then, I see. Okay. Can you think of a treat for tea, light and digestible? Wheat chocks What on earth are they? Oh, I see. Ah, now we've got deep into this story. We need to find out what wheat chocks are. Mum says, you watch this, Dad. First, I grate two ounces of eating chocolate, then sprinkle onto six wheat mm. Mother says, place them in a warm oven to melt. And Dad says, make enough for me, whatever it is. Her mother says, what with you and Donald? I don't know where I'd be without Mrs. Crisp. Oh, the wheat chocks. She's left them in the oven. Oh, she says, just in time. Now spread the melted chocolate over the tops and sides with a warm knife. Don't they look nice? Dad says, you took about a quarter of the time it takes to make biscuits. And mother says, we'll all have tea with Donald. He'll like that. Oh. Alexa, add Weetabix to my shopping list. Weetabix added to your shopping list. I mean, that was a nice story, but I can't stop worrying about Pete and Ted, can you? I hope they got on all right, made a success of things. Right, Ooh, what's this? Did you McLean your teeth today? Of course I did. McLean's peroxide toothpaste makes teeth white. Peroxide toothpaste, that can't still be a thing, surely? There's the contents there, I've not even started yet. What's this? Mornessa coat, £7.13 and four. That's a lot of money for a coat in 1950. Okay, carrying on. Ooh, a big full-page Ovaltine advert there. 
They're a competitor of Horlix. Again, makes you sleep. Now, spring comes to Covent Garden. Covent Garden in Covent Garden in London in 1950. Pubs were packed in them days. They sell beer and tea. A couple of nuns doing their shopping. There's old Steptoe there. 12 years before the TV series started. All right, what we got here then? A miracle photographed. Baby chick. All right, let's see. Science in colour there. Why we should idolise Rommel. Of course, it was only five years after the war ended, so there's obviously going to be a lot of war material still in these magazines. Paris decides the spring look. An air cadet sees the world. Interested. Oh yeah, there's the lacrosse team. England's lacrosse team. Interested. Mm -hmm. The beaches of Rio. Not much change there. Very similar today. I suspect. I mean, I've never been there. Oh, look at that. Born Vita. Another sleep-inducing drink. How much is that? Let's have a look. Born Vita still cost only one and tenpence halfpenny per half pound tin. So you could give them two shillings. Nice one there from 1945. Not many people called it a florin back then. It's only recently coin collectors started calling them florins. 1950 right up until oh, decimal days it just would have been called a two bob bit or two shillings. Last time it appeared on a coin, the word florin was 1936, and then it was changed to two shillings after that. Even before that, I suspect they called it a two shilling piece or a two bob bit. I don't know the reason they changed it to two shillings. Does anybody know that? I mean, that could be the reason everybody called it a two shilling piece. So if you wanted the half pound tin for one and tenpence halfpenny, you'd give them the two shilling piece and you'd get... One penny and a halfpenny change. A penny halfpenny, or three halfpence, as my nan used to call it. Yeah, she'd say, oh, I remember when it only cost three halfpence. Now it's 15 quid or whatever it was. Oh, Mr. K. So that must be Danny K. Yeah. I remember Danny K. He played Walter Mitty in the film The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. And there he is doing the ice bucket challenge way before anybody else. What else we got? The kitchen becomes mechanised. So there's an old kitchen there, and that's a modern kitchen. And there we are, ultra modern kitchen. Wait a minute, where's the flat screen telly on the wall? Where's the microwave? Where's the air fryer? I have got a kettle though, unlike most American kitchens. Now, I, I knew someone who spent some time in America, and he said the reason they don't have kettles is because their voltage is not like over here, 240 volts. It's only about six volts or something like that and it takes 500 years to boil a kettle i mean i might be slightly out on some of those figures but put me right please oh look at that there's a modern oven there white oven some old ones there look at that what's that 1848 and some tumble dryers what's that what's she doing What's that say? A dish washing dream. A washing machine that also does dishes. It takes a service of six people. So you put clothes and crockery in there. Is that a thing? Was it a thing? There's some irons from 1835 right through to the modern one in 1950. Now just don't buy clothes that crease. Oh, some more kitchen gadgets there. There's a tease made there. I didn't know that was around in 1950. I thought that was a 60s, 70s invention. All right, missionary on crutches. Keith Lynn lost his leg at 12, but he's made himself a job spreading the gospel around the Australian outback. Mm. Right, what's this? Victims of frozen theory. What? Yeah, I don't know if you can read that. If you want to pause it and read it. I don't know if that's going to be... I don't know what we got here then. A child artist from the east, a five-year-old attends a life class in Tokyo. So there he is, a little artist 
five years old, he'll be pushing 80 now. That's not something you usually see in coin videos, is it? What's this? Walk a Barrett way. Jolly good show, Mr. Barrett. A Phillips bicycle advert, and there's some prices. £11.19 and threepence, so nearly £12 for a bicycle. So what would that equate to in today's money? Someone will tell me. Pressure cookers. 85 shillings there, that's £4.25 in today's money. Crossword. Feel free to pause that and put the answers in the comments. <laughs> oh, flowers, special brew. Flowers and Sun Brewery. Shame there's no price there though. Bengers, malted milk drink, another knock you out at bedtime drink. Uh, two and six, so that's easy. Half a crown. Two and six. Two shillings and sixpence. Oh, lots of little adverts on here. Some sticky tape there. Not a word we usually associate with sticky tape, but did they change their name to Scotch Tape? I think they might have done. Lots of little adverts here. Sports binoculars. 15 shillings, that's 75p in today's money. So I don't think they would be very good even back then. And 5 shillings, 25 pence for a pocket telescope. Um, ordnance survey, two-tone jacket. What's that? What's that? Ordnance survey, two-tone lasting jackets, 30 shillings. That's uh, £1.50. A little bit there. Grow your own mushrooms. Earn money from it. Oh, I can see another little story. What are these two geezers talking about? A couple of squirrels. He's saying, didn't see you out with Mary last night. He goes, no, nah, she wouldn't be seen out with me. Oh. Take my tip, Fred. Smarten yourself up by using cherry blossom on those shoes. That's a bright idea. Look at his shoes. They're shiny. And he's thinking, how stupid of me. Every girl likes to see a fellow looking smart. Gee, some shine on this. That must be Mary. Hello, Fred. You look smart. Now I will come out with you tonight. Fred should have said, nah, you're all right. I'm staying in to watch the darts. There's nothing like cherry blossom boot polish for a quick, brilliant shine. I'll have a small tin then, please. Uh, there's your threepence halfpenny. If you're still with me, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. We're nearly there. Flag sauce. I don't remember flag sauce, does anybody? Astral Skin Cream by Gibbs. That's here then. Sandyman Sherry, 18 shillings a bottle. So that's 90 pence in 1950. That's quite expensive, I think. Halib Orange, the nicest way of taking halibut oil. What's that, like cod liver oil? Is it similar to that? Just notice there's a page missing here. That happened in another magazine. Jumps from 72 to 75. wonder what that could have been. Lucasade there. Two and six a bottle. That's half a crown or 12 and a half pence in today's money. Plus threepence deposit returnable. So when you take the bottle back to the shop, you get your threepence back. I hear rumours they're bringing that back, but it'll never happen, will it? Barclay Trailer Caravan. So how much was a caravan back in 1950? The Ambassador accommodates four. £950 plus £8 tax. That was an absolute fortune in 1950. Okay. Lung tonic. What's that? Albridge. Is that how you pronounce that? Albridge Lung Tonic. I wonder what that had in it. They didn't have to put the ingredients on in them days. Big bottle, three and eleven. Small bottle, one and six. So the small bottle, one shilling and sixpence. And don't forget, in 1950, there'd still be a lot of these old coins circulating. Edward the Seventh there. What year was that be? 1902. We've got an old Victorian one there from 1875. There's the Valehead Victoria. 1897 and these are still be circulating for another 21 years after this magazine was uh, printed they were demonetized in 1971 this big one here look the birds color in the home 
wall wall premiere paints don't think they're still going water paint does that mean water based i assume it does right what have we got here then uh -huh. it's a bit nasty okay when you're drinking doors you're drinking real orange squash says jack door of doors doors orange squash two and six so that's another half crown doesn't say about a um, deposit on that one though glass bottle I think Ada the home laundress he's bought her a washing machine to the Easter bride an Ada electric washing machine with all good wishes <laughs> no other wedding gift will help so much to make good wishes come true <laughs> And look, he's put a bow around it to my wife and there's some flowers on top as well. You know, I think that could be a little bit tongue in cheek, you know, the way she's holding her hands ready to go. <laughs> what do you think? All right, we're coming to the end now. One more double page. Seeing is believing. Purcell washes whiter. If you want to join the Royal Air Force, there's a little form for you to fill in and send away. And on the back page, Another cigarette advert to Morier, filtered for flavour. We'll leave her in peace with her cigarette. Okay, do you want me to do any more of these magazines or shall I just stick to coins? Let me know in the comments. Well, thanks for watching. If you did watch this video all the way, you're heroes. Okay, see you in the next one.